Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. This one is from the Napkins series and it's featuring the napkin from Ninny's Napkins called Bella Musica. And you can see that it's black and white with a colored image. More about that later. So when you open it up, you see four images of this. And I'm trying to decide which art journal book I want. And one of the things that I find it just helps is to cut out the image. Now, usually I've peeled back the, t the plies first and then cut it. But if you want it a little bit more stable, if you cut it beforehand, it's a little easier. And so I'm kind of doing it in reverse order. So here I am still removing and I'm making sure that I get both extra plies off before I do the water cutting. And I'm using a little bit of painter's tape on the edges. So you now don't throw those little pieces away because you can still use them to collage, to stamp on and all sorts of other things. So now that I have the images free, I can play around with the composition and decide, am I going to use this, you know, almost six by seven art journal page or my nine by 12? And I'm playing with the composition and I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to do? So now that I have a better idea, I'm just removing the excess of the napkin and I'm using my, what I call the water cut technique. I don't know if that's the name, but that's what I call it. I'm using a liner brush and just a little bit of water. You wet it and you put it where you want to cut it or remove the excess. If I'm unsure about what I want or don't want out, I can leave it and edit it later once I have a firmer idea about exactly what I want or don't want. But you can see how very easy this is. And for me, this is so much easier than using scissors to cut around there. And I like the torn edges. It kind of fades into the background a little bit better in my mind. But if you're better with scissors or that's the way you roll, go with that. So I'm just placing this on here and I'm cutting out elements. You And again, anything that I cut off goes in a pile and I can use those as collage items at another point in time. Now I only want one of the violins on this page. So I'm editing out the other one. I want to use the flowers a little bit more. And I'm going to basically build my composition with the flowers or several of them. Remember, there were four images on the napkin and I used multiple ones to build up the composition that I wanted. And that's the nice part of using a napkin because you have multiples. So back to the page. So I'm thinking I want this in the corner and this one over here kind of draping down. And on the larger piece, this is going to give me a lot of room to do excess stuff. I can add, you know, stenciling or modeling paste. So, that's why I chose to do the bigger one. If I was only doing the smaller one, I probably just would have had the larger one with the violin in the corner. Now, because this is musical, I decided that I am going to put a layer of music papers. And I got this music book at the thrift store shop, you know, a couple bucks. It's yellowed. And at this point in time, I'm thinking of going very vintagey golden brown in the background. I want all over music, both underneath the napkin images, as well as everywhere on the background. And I'm going to try to challenge myself to maintain where you can see this. Now across the top, I want a straight edge, so I'm cutting it. The rest of it, I do want it ripped. 
Now this is the TCW gel medium matte finish and I've watered it down because I like the thinner consistency of a fluid matte medium. And so basically I'm taking something I have and adding water to be able to use it when I'm gluing things down. And it worked absolutely fine. You can mix up just enough. You can take, put some on the palette, add water right there, just use it all up. But I tend to use a lot of it with my decoupage and doing lots of our journal pages. So I made a small batch of it. And I'm just recycling one of the containers. So I'm putting the, what I've now, my homemade matte medium using the gel medium from TCW. And I'm putting it underneath and on top. It's a bit of trial and error. You got to make sure that it still acts as an adhesive, that you don't add too much water. So this background, the layered up, it's just going to add a lot of texture as well as the patterning there. I'm now, as I've started to dry it, I'm lifting up the edges. No matter how careful I am, I always seem to miss some. So I kind of go around before I wash my brush, lift up the edges, make sure everything is firmly done. Take time to just wipe it out, the excess matte medium or gel medium, and then throw it in the water. Now, this is my usual glue one, and as you can see, it's pretty grungy and it's hardened. I don't want to use that brush when I'm decoupaging with the napkin. The napkins are very fragile when they get wet, so I'm using a newer brush that is soft. And I'm putting it under and then on top. And I start kind of in the middle, and I'm brushing out to get rid of any wrinkles. I'm not a fanatic about the wrinkles. I like that texture. That just adds, in my mind, to a mixed media piece. It would be different if you were doing the more formal decoupaging and you wanted it completely smooth and without wrinkles. And you can see how the music paper still picks, peeks through. And I apologize that some of this is off camera. I did bring it back in, but I'm just building up the pieces here. And I'm taking several pieces of that napkin and that floral that I cut from the multiple images on the napkin. I played around with sentiment and I found the one when words fail, music speaks. And the earth has music for those who listen. And I like the boldness of the black. Now remember, at this point in time, I'm going, I thought I was going neutral browns and golds. And then I just wasn't feeling it. So I decided I'm going to go blue. And I grabbed my light blue permanent and my cobalt teal and some white gesso. And I'm just rubbing it in the open spaces. Now those napkins with the black and white images are great because if you have script behind it or something detailing, you're going to show that if you chose to leave them white. Now my plan is going to be to colorize them. Now my plan here was to go very pastel-y, watercolor -y look, light pink. I laugh because, you know, I make plans and then I get going in the artistic and creative process and the page seems to take over. So I'm just blending it. I want the different colors. That's why I'm using the cobalt teal and the blue. They're very close, but I want different, I want interest in that background. I've got texture from the papers. I've got the music from the music papers. And now I'm going to have the variation in color. 
So I'm using my fingers, I'm using brushes, I'm getting in between. I find, again, using angle brushes really work well for getting into those tight areas. So if that's something you struggle with, try an angle brush. I do have some listed in, in my Amazon store if you're looking for, for some. They do not have to be expensive brushes. I'm just filling in those areas. And as you can see, I was able to keep the music image from it, it's coming up. I didn't block it totally away. And if it was a little bit too much, I grabbed a baby wipe and wiped it back because I want to keep that music in there because I'm choosing a, a, a saying that has music in it. As you can see, I, I played around and I've already started to colorize some of the leaves there. You're gonna see me doing part of that process. Part of it I did do off camera because a, a lot of it is highly repetitive and you don't need to see me doing the same thing. But I do want you to know that this, on video I had, it was over an hour and part of it wasn't even caught on video. So this page, took probably a good two hours in completion, even though the video itself is 20 minutes. So I wanna add a little more interest to the background. So I grabbed this scroll work stencil from the Crafters Workshop, and I will link that down below. You can get these through the TCW store, which I have linked below, as well as through Ninny's napkins. She now has six inch and 12 inch stencils from the Crafters Workshop. So check out her supply of them. And I'm using here, I'm using white gesso. You could use white acrylic paint. It would be a little more opaque. And I wanted that variation. I wanted some areas darker, so I went over them a couple times with the white gesso. Here I'm just lining up the stencil a little bit more trying to continue the pattern, but I'm not gonna fret if it's not perfect. This is the background. So now I'm going to colorize those white the white images from the napkin. And I'm gonna use the pattern that's there loosely as the guide. Some of the bigger flowers I'm gonna use a lot more and the smaller ones, I'm just kind of at using it as, as a very basic guide. And I'm going in with a very painterly approach. I'm mixing the colors. I've got yellow and the green with white gesso. I'm, I'm kind of globbing it on a little bit. I'm not too particular. And I find the less particular I get, the more I like what I end up with. Now this is not in my comfort zone. I know when you're watching this, you're probably saying, oh, how does she know what to do? And it looks so good, I couldn't do that. Well, I this is not my comfort zone. And I'm just practicing my skill and only by practicing and by doing it are you going to get better. After all, it is a page, it is paper and paint. And really it's about the process and having fun and exploring, maybe building skills. So here I'm going after that very light pink and the pink that I chose wasn't quite right. It was more violet and I think it kind of determined where I ended up. But I just keep going. And I'm mixing the paint right on the brush. If it gets, if I'm covering up the lines that are there, I'm taking the paint back because I want to see where the shading is. I want to build on that.
if I wanted the napkin, the white and the black and white images to stay black and white, I would have glued them down before I put the music paper on, or I would have glued them down onto copy paper or mixed media paper and then glued that, cut that out and glued it on. And that would have kept it bright white. And if you've watched my channel, you know I like having black and white images at times. So this napkin has a lot of versatility. And as I said, Ninny's at uh, Ninny's Napkins has, there are several, three or four, maybe even five different napkins that are very similar, that have black and white images with a little bit of colored image. And I have a few more of those in my stash, so um, you'll see me doing them in different ways. Speaking of which, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. That way you'll get a thumbnail, you can see what I'm up to, and if it's something that interests you, you can click on that and come and watch the video. If you aren't getting notified, you may need to go through the process of unsubscribing and then resubscribing. So I wasn't sure about the colors here. I grabbed purple with that kind of violet magenta color. And then I really liked the yellow addition in there. But there was a lot of playing around, a lot of time spent playing around with these colors and tweaking, adding more color, taking some off, adding layers, just playing around and enjoying the process until I got what I liked. And you're going for a very painterly abstract feel. I'm not going for realism. Here I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm shading the flowers. And I gotta be honest, I'm not exactly happy with this, so I do end up tweaking it a lot and changing it. There's lots more steps that go into the final project. I guess my point there is don't give up, like keep trying and coming back and adding. As I layer, I am shading with the dark, darker color there. I come back later, shade with black. I come back even after that and do something else. But I'm loving the pop of color, the pink, the violet, you know, I'm not doing the pale pink at all. Here I'm coming back and I'm shading with the black. And I'm really liking that. It's giving it a lot of depth. Now, I'm not following any rules with highlights and shading. I don't know those. I am just kind of, I do something, and if I like it, I do it again. And I'm just experimenting. That's an area that, you know, I'm not really, it's not my comfort zone. And I haven't quite figured out the magic formula for it. There's the one and there's the ones with the shading. And I hope, you know, you could leave it either way. If you like it without the shading, by all means, leave it without the shading. You could come in and use a liner pan and add some line work. A lot of people do that. And I'm just being very loose here. I don't have, you know, I'm not being very precise at all. Trying adding some pink on there with onto the yellow. Then I grab my stylus and I put black dots in the middle and I really like how that looks. It seems to tie everything together. Like I said, it's trial and error and now you can learn from what I'm doing. Have fun with it.
I mean, you have four images on the one napkin. You could do four different pages and keep playing with it and try different looks and grow. That's one of the things that I did when I first started art journaling. I would do the same page or watercolor, do the same thing multiple times. The bow for the violin seemed to have gotten lost, so I'm just adding some brown and black and just painting it in, making it a little darker so it stands out just a little bit. Now I'm adding some highlights. I have discovered that I, when I shade with the darker color, you want more. And when you're doing the white with the highlights here, it's very restrained, very little. Less is more. And stop every once in a while and hold it back or take a picture and view it from afar. When you're in the thick of it, it's sometimes we are too close and we cannot see how wonderful what we have is done. Some of these flowers I like better than others. I think I did a better job, but they're abstract flowers. And an afternoon spent painting is a great way to spend an afternoon. And there's the one before all the shading. So you can see how the shading and highlighting really does make a difference. And of course, I'm using an angle brush for that and the float acrylic technique. So now I want to introduce some of that pink into the background. It's a little too pristine. This also covers up any painterly mistakes. Splattering just hides all evil. And then I come in with black as well because I know my, my sentiment is going to have black in it. After you splatter, make sure you give it a good dry. So I'm grabbing my General's Charcoal Pen and then you get three in a pack, soft, extra soft and medium, and a white one. So I'm using the white to add a little bit more highlights. And I'm really liking that, that effect. It, it's giving me less. Then I come in and I decide, you know, I'm gonna do some shading with the charcoal. And it's just a look, it's a different look than when you shade with the angle brush. And I'm kind of liking this. It, it really leads to the painterly thing. So I'm outlining it. Some of it I'm smudging, some of it I do not smudge. And if you've got an eagle eye, you're going to note that, yeah, she's redoing some things. Again, there was lots of redoing. And I want to be really open with that. I'm just, I continue till I think that it's done. I'm using the same General's charcoal to edge the paper. Now the charcoal pencil is not permanent. So if I was to go over this with water or put water on top of it or glue something down, it would move. But I, at this stage, I'm pretty much done. And I'm not going to do that. I do have to glue down the sentiment. So I'm going to have to be mindful that I don't go anywhere where there's charcoal pencil because I will pick that up and I will move it and I will make a mess. You can spray it with a workable fixative. And if this was a canvas, I would do that. I thought maybe I'd highlight some of these. I give it a try with the charcoal pencil. Don't really like it. And here's the nice part with the charcoal. I can cake a baby wipe and erase it. So it's very forgiving. I'm just sharpening the charcoal pencil here with my Faber-Castell sharpener. 
and just adding more shading. I'm going to, like I said, I kept playing with this till I liked it, till I was happy. And lots of that playing around was not caught on camera. I have to tell you, when I saw this page at the end and the flowers had gotten so dark, more purpley than I imagined, I was a little bit surprised at the end result. I love it. But I was so involved in the process that, you know, I just followed where the page led. So here I'm just loosely and I'm holding the pencil very lightly actually, and I'm loosely going around it, and I'm liking that loose look. And I think that black around, especially those little yellow flowers, just adds so much. And I'm not careful about following exactly what was the napkin. Remember, the napkin was just the guide. And in this process, you've made it your own. Before I touch my sentiments, I'm cleaning off any of the charcoal off my fingers. I printed this off with my laser printer. If you don't have a laser printer, you can print it off on with your inkjet. You will need to spray it with a workable fixative or hairspray to seal the ink. I've also heard that it helps if you print it off and let it sit for a couple weeks, a couple days, I don't know. You have to figure out what works for you. Back with my DIY fluid medium that I made out of with water and my TCW gel medium. I chose and made this font, the fonts a little bigger because the page was bigger. And removing the tape that keeps my nice straight edge. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you give this kind of process a try, either using a napkin or um, a free printable coloring book. Thanks for joining me. Happy creating.